virtual audience, friends, family, my mom, however you stumbled upon this piece of internet content. My name is Kid at Heart, Steve Starobinski, and this is the Happy Half Hour, a conversation or rather an introduction, maybe in the time of Corona, maybe a little bit longer, to interesting people that are in the business of play, trends, fashion, cool things overall. And today's special guest, we have somebody who fused, is a fusion. He, he fuses the world of play with AR, mixed reality, virtual reality. He's my friend, Steve Rad. Say hello. It's uh, a pleasure, I, and I appreciate the, uh, the friend designation. Uh, you're my favorite person to hunt down at every possible event, meeting. It's uh, always a, a strike of genius meets positive energy. So thank you for having me. You look great. You look great. Bro, I had to, I had to update my uh, my lens game. I saw your stuff, and I'm like, I got to get this uh, camera lens game to the next level. I watched a few episodes. I'm like, I see your tricks. You're using prime lenses. Look, you know. I'm on to you. When Corona happened, I figured everybody was going, there was going to be a race to who would be the best salesperson on Zoom, you know? And I figured the only way That's to true. do that That's is true. to put in the work, right? That's true. So I'm like, how do I put in the work faster? So. That's we true. launched the Happy Half Hour, brother. Welcome to the show, the Triple H. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank I am you. very, very curious because you recently took the entrepreneurial step and formed your own company after how many years with Spicebox, a leading book plus something extra cool company. Can you tell us about the launch of Abacus Brands and what your point of differentiation is in the industry of play? You know, for um, I guess for, for Abacus, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's so cliche to go with the uh, wanting to make the learning or educational aspect uh, of toys fun. But for us, we saw a, a lane where we could go a little cerebral and go, you know, trick kids effectively, trick kids into thinking they were uh, playing a game while they were learning, right? So effectively gamifying the experience of learning, um, taking on, uh, you know, school-like content and subjects in the, in the STEM category being you know, science, math, the, the, uh, the space and engineering. I mean, parents kind of look at it as, yeah, it's kind of fun or it's kind of, you know, a mixed batch of, uh, mm -hmm. of uh, education meets, you know, a little bit of learning. But then with Abacus, bringing that AR and VR tech side uh, to it uh, really helped open up a lot of doors and really helped that gamify experience. So, so that's, that's our, that's our uh, lane. That's our challenge. That's our, you know, the, nobody goes you know, everyone has their own reason why they go on to do their, their their own thing and start their own business and you know being prepared to lose and uh, eat shit every day and you know get up and try to figure out how to how to navigate around it and figure out how to make that gaming experience fun while educating kids is, is yeah. our is our ongoing puzzle I like that I like to I like to think about it at the camouflaging education but the right. play For has sure. to come first it has For sure. to we we, we, we call ourselves education uh, ninjas, you know, it's always a, a process of like, how do we just trick the kid? The, the, the irony of it is on the sales side, you're selling to, you're selling to mom, right? So when you're selling to mom, mom has to still, mom's looking for education. Mom's looking for, you know, uh, where, where's my kid going to learn? So it's like, it's the double-edged sword. You know, your, your mom and dad want education, kid wants fun and game. So, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's, uh, you, you get where I'm going with it, but. Um, I love it. I love it. You feel like innovation and accessibility in the AR and VR space is like coming from everywhere. The idea is dynamic. Can you talk through your approach of how you combine this content needy, you know, play pattern with to reinvent traditional child learning? For sure. I mean, look, for us, for us, AR and VR was the natural fit with, you know, with books and educational content, right? Take something that's already so systematically, I don't want to say boring, but just so set in its ways and then, and then bring it to life by using technology. So uh, that's where kids are. Kids, kids don't just want to learn anymore. They want to, they want to feel, they want to experience, they want to immerse themselves into, into the content, right? So for us, um, you know, figuring out how to take a, uh, a book that had, you know, 150 pages of content, publishing that, then saying, okay, great, that, now let's make every single picture in here come alive. Now let's make every single video uh, take you to a place where you can actually feel and be in that experience. So, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, uh, AR, VR content and bombardment coming down the pipeline. I think for us, uh, it was interesting when we really harnessed the effective nature of making it 
digestible and making it yeah. so that yeah. you know uh, the kids can just you know it, it was the grandma can come in I get it. You know what I mean? The guy comes out, he does this, and then he shows you that video, and then boom, you go to Mars and then drive around, and then you come back, and then you go to the next page, right? So making it tangible, digestible, and easy to absorb, I think was yeah. the, uh, yeah, what was it, our it, thing? It, 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 I, I'll, I think the word dynamic or, or duplexity, duplicity, what's the word, the yin and the yang of, of combining two things, right? You're combining yeah. traditional yeah. play with through a screen which is like the antithesis of yeah. what our industry kind of has stood for for so long yeah. you know yeah. I, listen, I, I, it's so like it's as a father it's myself, reflecting sorry go ahead yeah yeah i was just saying, as, as a father myself you know that i get i get the drawback i get the uh the screen time pushback and we all have it it's it's a, it's a natural thing i think the generation or the culture we grew up in you know, having TV was uh, almost vilified at a certain point and then, and now the device and it's, you know, of course gotten out of hand. But I think, I think for us, it's creating those, uh, those moments of, uh, of guilt-free screen time, if I may, yeah. uh, for, you know, for parents to be like, here you go, go, go learn, go enjoy. At least I know I have the peace of mind that you're absorbing, you know, content that matters or some kind of, you know, educational uh, data that that's being absorbed. So I think, um, taking that that uh, guilt out of it for parents is, is a big underlying factor for us. I love that. You're embracing it. I love it. Well, let's switch gears on you just a little bit. The last time I saw you, or the last time I saw you, we were at New York Toy Fair and you had a super funky boot. We'll get that up on the screen. On the screen, ultra disruptive. I would even call it futuristic. Can you tell us what inspired you to buck against the grain? And the booth was, uh, the booth uh, again came naturally, right? For, we're, we're a VR tech company where, you know, for us it was, how are we going to show everyone all of the content, all the videos, all the, everything we've created um, without making everyone, you know, wear goggles or bringing 50 pairs of goggles to a show and, and sanitizing those. Uh, this was pre-COVID, of course, or when, yeah. when, when COVID was a blip on the radar at the moment. But, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's some, somewhere some, someone mentioned the idea of doing something, you know, surrounding you. And then we were like, whoa, what about the the things from Burning Man <laughs> or the, the, the big dome experiences where you could walk in and have, have an experience. So, so yeah, that, that was a really, really cool piece um, that, uh, that, you know, kind of shaped itself together and, and allowed us to really show our content off and show our videos and have people just step inside. Not only did they get that uh, immersive experience of, of being in VR, but they didn't have to wear a headset. So it was really, really cool. And of course, added a lot of value to, to the entire uh, presence of the show. And um, uh, yeah, you I, know, I, I, Burning Man keeps coming up in 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 my circles and in, in business circles. I feel like specifically VR because I'm super interested and 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 I'm identifying it as one of the biggest trends in play or in the future of play. AR, yep. VR, mixed reality. You know, at some point it's it's that it's that feeling of letting go you know when you when, you're, when i'm in virtual reality when i experience you know the 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 professional headsets like oculus or uh, htc and you know you go into real vr and you're in those you know in that uh in that immersion it's uh you know it's 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 overwhelming at first and then it's 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 joyous and then you know you come out like i'm really kind of not that interested in reality all of a sudden anymore you know because you know, whatever you were in or whatever you were experiencing was so just, just had no boundaries so yeah, I think uh, the people at Burning Man or any of these uh, festivals or raves or, or immersive experiences, uh, there's a guy here locally, uh, um, a good friend of mine in Vancouver that's doing a, a meditation dome where he gets you in and, you know, you experience. But I think, I think feeling yeah. that power of letting go and just, you know, relaxing into a world where you know you're safe and you can, and then on top of that, you can learn from is, is pretty, pretty empowering. It's awesome, man. It's awesome. Well, I do want to talk about food next because you yeah. and i have shared some delicious meals together mm, that's right uh i would like to talk specifically about your kids cooking item because mm. i think it's the answer to a lot of the issues with society you know if right. you taught kids how to cook delicious healthy meals earlier if you empowered them gave them these life skills you could really change the fabric of society in a lot of ways yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and I feel like your toy is inc an incredible step towards that. Can you talk to us about the kids' cooking set from Abacus? For sure. You know, the kids' cooking set, VR Junior Chef, has been 
has been probably the most challenging skew for us in the sense that there, there's so much going on in this kit. There's so much happening in terms of content that, uh, you know, when we first, you know, this is two years ago when we made the, the first original version that we licensed uh, uh, to another company, it was, how do we, how do we, how do we even promote, how do we market what's happening in this kit? You know, is it, is it food? Is it recipes? Uh, then we have the whole science aspect, you know, you're learning science while you're doing the, the food, you know, um, I'm learning about yeast and gluten and, you know, it, or do parents care about the STEM side or are they just trying to make recipes? And then the biggest, the biggest piece of it, the biggest hurdle was everybody thought you were cooking virtually. And, you know, it's not a, it's not a virtual cooking set. You're not, you're not, we're not asking anyone to go into virtual reality and hold a fake, you know, pot and pan and make fake virtual recipes, which would be cool. Right. But, um, different, but that's, that's not what it does. Right. So, so I think a lot of people, even, even in the, in the bi conversation with buyers, consumers, it was like, well, I really don't want my kid to be cooking virtually. I want them to like, I, you know, I think cooking should be a very hands-on thing. I'm like, it is, it is a hands-on thing. I, I promise it's totally hands-on. We're going to, it's check it, go buy it, check it out. It's super hands-on. Yeah. So, so, you know, um, we, uh, I, I don't know if I should talk about this yet, but it's, it's a, it's another, it's a done licensing deal that we're doing with, uh, uh, Master Chef. So we just did a deal Ooh. with Master Chef on uh, Master Chef Junior on that item, um, and we think it's the piece that's going to really give it the legs or the layers that it needs to to just open up or shake the, you know, I don't know if the STEM thing is what what scares people. I don't know if the virtual piece is what scares people, but it's honestly the best, coolest yeah. item we have in our range. It's uh, it's so fun because of our the way we utilize our technology and the AR to watch recipes come alive and go step by step and take the guesswork out of it and be able to point and, and see every you know, recipe, tell you exactly what to do, then go into the virtual reality and have that experience of like, where did, where did the chocolate bean come from? How did that originate? Where did, you know, how, how does osmosis play a role? And you know, uh, how, how, what's dehydration? How are, how, why is my cheese melting? How, why does that happen in nachos? You know what I mean? So sure. to add those, those pieces of science to it after you learn the recipe, I think it's a very, Again, cerebral way to sneak in some science and learning with, you know, you're going to remember that, that recipe for life. I mean, uh, you know, so why not squeeze in some, uh, some, some science in the process? Spot on, brother. Spot on. It's a perfect segue to another license that you recently acquired that I'm so, so pumped about. Uh, I used to watch this guy as a kid. Uh, you, please. Steve Rad, can you tell us what license you acquired at Advocates Brands, please? We, uh, we've, we've got also my childhood hero, uh, Bill Nye, the science guy Boom. On, his, uh, on his first ever uh, VR science kit. Um, we're, we're over the moon. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a match made in heaven. I think everybody would agree. I, you know, for us, it was a natural, uh, just a natural progression to what we already loved in, in our science kit. We thought it was already progressive. We thought it already embodied a lot of great content. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Bill had been approached a lot for, for you know, for, by other companies for science kits. And I think right. the conversation in the very beginning was he didn't just want to slap his name on us. They, they told me very early on, Bill's not going to just slap his name on a science toy. Okay. So, um, Got a lot to lose. You and then we, and we wanted, and we were, and that was the best thing you know, for me. It was like, perfect. That's not what we want. I want to, you know, I want to, I want to get something where, where we could make it Bill's voice and we could, you know, bring bring Bill to life. And I think with the VR element, you, the, the fact that you get to go into virtual reality with Bill, learn a lesson, the fact that we get to, you know, humanize the item, catch his, his uh, persona, his humor, his intellect, all of his knowledge based on, on every matter and bring it into virtual reality and educate kids there and then say, okay, now take off the goggles and now do what you just learned and execute the project. I think it was a match made in heaven. I'm very, uh, very, very excited about the deal. I think uh, it's, it's just a, a great, great item. There's a couple more uh, items coming down the pipeline uh, in that range with Bill. Uh, he's been very hands-on. He's, uh, he's audited all of our work and, you know, is, is, has been a battle with our, with our editorial team just to make sure, you know, uh, everything down to the way things are pronounced and the way, you know, uh, yeah. something should, should be, you know, some things should be uh, visualized in, on, in, inside VR and what reference points we need to see to, to you know, really tie in all the real life examples. So okay. it's gonna make, at the end of the day, it's going to make for a better, a better product. Steve, you went to film school at USC. Can you tell us about your creative career before toys and how it has helped you in an industry where content is becoming king? I mean, you know, content, content's always been king, right? It's, uh, it's a, uh, a dynamic process. I think film school, the one thing it, it really 
teaches you aside from some technical skills is, uh, is storytelling and effectively like how to embody the consumer or the audience and tell that story for that audience. Right. So I think, um, you know, being uh, producing independent films out of, out of college or university for, uh, Netflix or Paramount pictures, and then going to, uh, to, to spice box where it was a, a publishing role. I think marrying those two and, and understanding children's publishing with, uh, with the film and entertainment side of the world really helped bridge that gap with, uh, you know, finding, finding a way to tell stories for now, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 year olds and adding that entertainment value to it to kind of beef up the, uh, the experience. Absolutely. Spot on my friend. My favorite movie, Memento. Did you ever see that? Of course. I saw it in the theaters. Yeah, me too. And you know, what's funny. I, I, I stumbled across Memento. I, I was in, I was in medical school. I was supposed to be a doctor. And I, I, and one day we missed our show and we accidentally went into a theater and saw Memento. And I was like, I dropped out of medical school and told my parents I was going to film school. It was like the most devastating afternoon for my mother. <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, I came back like, mom, the, the movie was backwards. backwards. They shot the whole thing backwards. And she was like, oh, just relax. Where are you going with this? So yeah, that was definitely a defining moment of uh, big changing brother lanes. Took me and- to, uh, to, that, to that movie. You know, I, I'll always remember that movie. Great, great, yeah. great job. And, uh, and a little bit of a personal congrats, my friend, Steve Brad. You've just recently became a dad for the second time. Uh, shout out. You see the bags under my eyes? You, can you, can no. you tell? No, you know, you look, you look great. Uh, I got the 10, I got the 10 day old, you know what I mean? The 10 day old little girl, she's an angel, but you know, she waits till like midnight is when she wants to get lit and, you know, start firing off, but sleeps all day. And then it's, you know, it's game time at midnight, but, but thank you, brother. You. I appreciate it. Well, I, I, I lulled you down, but don't fret because this is the final, final segment. This is what you've been working towards, an opportunity to shout out anyone, anywhere in a segment we like to call the creation of positive energy. My friend, Steve Rad, Vancouver, Canada, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks, man. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely uh, one of the luckiest people with uh, the, the amount of contacts and people that I have at my disposal and reach uh, that, that give me uh, just a bounce board of positivity is, is alarming. But, um, you know, guys like, uh, you know, the, the, the people that can never get any love or like the people, you know, that are out, out working the front lines, the, the Jeff Hursts of the world, the, uh, the Jody Pedersons of the world, the, um, the you know, Josh Lorzels of the world. And, uh, you know, uh, Levin Nelson, who's a good, good friend of mine who was just going out on his own. Uh, that's, a, that's a sleeper cell you got to keep your eyes on. Yeah, I know him. He's um, smart. Uh, Sidney Hyatt on our team. What's that? I know him. He's smart. He's smart, man. Yeah, he's going, he's going, he's going solo. My internal team, Sydney Hyde. Uh, I mean, every, you, bro, you're, you know, one of those guys that I can call anytime and say, hey, what do you think of this? Uh, I, I, I think I value that. Uh, Nick Tank, Nick, you know, Zawitz a tangle. Uh, the people that you can call on any moment and say, hey, man, am I crazy with this, with this concept? Is this, is this one skew? Is this box art? Just, am I, am I, you know, am I out to lunch right now? I think those people that are there as a bounce board that can uh, kind of help navigate you in the process are, are invaluable. So I appreciate all those people in my life and uh, I appreciate you having this segment. But man, we appreciated Abacus Brands doesn't dump down toys for kids. You use VR, you use AR, you embrace technology and understand that, you know, screen time when moderated, when curated, when with mom and education in mind could be very positive for society for a long time to come. Steve Brad, AKA my friend, AKA Abacus Brand, AKA Mr. VR in the toy business. Thank you so much. Kid and Heart, Steve. I love you, brother. Hey, I love you, brother. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Take care. All right, now that was good.